So now we're going to apply what we know about the box model and floats to understand better how the 960 grid system works. So really, you know, the purpose of the 960 grid system is to divide the page into columns. And here I've just added these little lines here as well uh, that we'll see later. And, and it has to do with how the 960 grid system per se uh, adds the columns in. And there's, you know, different column numbers, but they fit into the same width. Now, if you're using the variable grid system that I showed you, it's still the same idea. You can change what that width is, but the columns used, whether you use 12 or 16 or 24, will all fit in it. So this one here is the 16 column one, and this is the 12 column. They both fit into the same width. They just have a different number of columns to break it up. And you can actually use on the same page both of these systems. So you can have one container that's 16, and then underneath it one that's 12, and they'll fit together nicely. So one of the basic ideas to think about when you're doing the grid system is to realize that the whole purpose of the grid is really to determine the width of things. It's really all about the width. So what we start off with when you're looking at the CSS for the, for the grid system, and, and you know, I, I recommend that you, you might do that too. So um, you know, open up, this is the reset CSS, um, but here we go with the 960 CSS. I'm just going to break this down and look at some of this here of how they do it so you can understand a bit better about this 960 grid system and how that uh, grid system actually works. Okay, um, so we're going to take a look at that. All right, um, so the container class is the one that sets the width and also centers it. All right, so we get the width here. And then the margin left and right auto, that centers it. So you can use that, by the way, this trick other times in web development. If you give a block level element a width and a left and right margin of auto, it will get centered in uh, wherever it, it is. So that's it there. The blue here is the, the margin. The orange is the, the width. Uh, so that's the container. And that's why you need um, a, 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 some kind of div or whatever around everything with your class of container. Right, that starts everything, um, and you can have more than one of those, right? So I could have another one, um, and the container gets underscore 12 or underscore 16 for the number of columns in that container. And I can add another one here uh, with 16, and that could be 12. So that's what I mean by mixing and matching. So, But it's important that you have and then all your other uh, grid classes or divs or whatever they are are inside of that container. So the next part is understanding how... Um, all the columns have the same basic function, which is um, they're given a display of inline, uh, which makes sure that they come next to each other for some browsers, and a float left, which we talked about, and then given a left and right margin of 10 pixels. So we have our margins here, uh, and it's floated to the left so that things can line up next to it. Right? And that's given to all of the grid classes. Then. Um, let's look at how an individual grid works out. So this is a, a grid one, and so a grid is given a width. Now it still has on its left and right that 10 pixel margin we saw from the last page. And basically all the, all the rest of the CSS, uh, most of what it's doing is just saying how wide are certain numbers of columns. So I have a grid four, that's four columns, so it has our 10 pixel margin, and then it says, okay, this is 300 pixels wide, that covers four columns, and then we have our other one. So that's really you know what it is. You'll see that basically the grid is about determining the width of the items and width plus margin. And we're going to see later why that means you don't want to mess with it and add your own margin and stuff to these grid elements. Anything you apply a grid class to should keep uh, the margins and the width applied from the, the, nine, the grid system CSS. All right, um, and one other thing that they have here, if you're looking at it, this is just a, sort of an aside, is that some of these grid elements um, match up. So four columns in the 16 is the same width as three columns in the 12, and so they just add those together, um, and they style them both with the, the same width. And the same thing for 8 and 6, and 9 and 12, and 16 and 12 for the other two, like that. Okay. Um, that's just to sort of save some space and room. So here's one of the problems that a lot of you have come up with, which is if you put a grid within a grid, these margins that you have on the left and right of everything get duplicated. So we see on the, on the left here, this is my typical grid. It's a grid 6, and so it gets a left and right margin on it as well. Uh, and then I have another grid 6 here, so that has this margin left 
and one here, right? And it has its same width. But then I, I'm adding these grid twos inside of it, each one. And so they're getting an additional left and right margin and their width in it. And what's happened is is that that pushes everything over, as you can see here a little bit, 10 pixels to the right. Because I sort of duplicated on this part here the 10 pixels. So there's you know 10 from the 6 here and 10 from this 2 there. And so the way the 960 grid system solves that problem are with Oh, and by the way, sorry, before I go on, uh, that would mean that if you did that, um, this because it's 10 pixels too much to the right there, it went over 10 pixels, that's wider than it, so the float rules say, okay, it would move down to the next one. And that's where you sometimes find your, your grid broken. So the way to solve that is to use the alpha and omega classes. So really all alpha does when you look at the 960 system is just say margin left of 0. And omega, it says margin right of 0. So on this one here, if I add an alpha class to it in addition to the grid 2, that takes out that extra 10 pixels that I had here, and now it lines up properly. And on the last one, I add the omega one. Uh, and by the way, when I say first and last, I mean first and last that are inside another grid element. So these three are inside the grid 6, so those are the first and the last. If I had some inside this, they would get alpha and omega as well. Uh, and so that takes out the other right margin there, and so now things fit nicely with each other. All right, so that is alpha and omega and how you use those. So use those when you have a grid inside of a grid. You have a grid class here, and then when I have something inside of it that also has a grid applied to it, then I need to add alpha to the first one and omega to the last one. And if there's only one, for some reason I wanted to have a grid 6 within a grid 6, I can add both alpha and omega to that, that same element. Uh, there's no problem with that. Okay, so the other little things are prefixes. So what do prefixes do? Prefixes really just add a left padding. So we see here, that's a left padding. So if I have a grid 6, that's going to give it this six column width, and I by default still have my margins left and right, but the prefix five part adds five columns worth of padding to the left here. And so it adds that padding in and effectively pushes this over. By the way, it still means that the, any background color I give to this div will show here because it's just padding. Uh, remembering back to the box model. And then suffix does the same thing, uh, except on the right. So it adds padding to the right uh, with suffix. All right, so the other concept to, to come back to here is this idea of untouchable grids. And it goes back to our idea uh, in the box model that the total width is the combination of all of the padding margins and borders that we have. So our grids, though, define very tightly that they say, I'm going to add 10 pixels of margin and a certain width to each element. So if you add an additional padding to it, all of a sudden now, that thing is wider and it also will break the grid. So the basic uh, way behind around that is to, instead of adding your padding and so forth to anything that has a grid class on it, you add it to the content inside of it. So this is something that has a grid class on it. I wouldn't want to add any padding to this div or margins or borders, uh, but I have my paragraph inside of it. I can add my padding to that paragraph, and that will space it out. Uh, and it won't affect the overall width of anything. Because remember, these paragraphs, if I don't give a width, so I also wouldn't want to, by the way, give a width here to this paragraph, um, it will, by default, fill as much width as it can. And so then I can just add uh, my padding in there, and the width will get determined um, automatically. Okay, and then this also has plays into the concept of the reset CSS that we use. So really the, the, the last thing I'm going to cover. And it's very important that you include the reset style sheet in it. Uh, and basically what it does is it just zeroes out your margin padding and borders. And that's because by default, most browsers add a certain amount of padding, margin, or borders to some elements, like the H elements or the list elements and things like that. And so if you made an H2 element, but you wanted to add a grid class to it, it would get extra padding, and it would, it would break the grid, and, and things get a little messy. So what you do is you use a reset style sheet. You take all the default out by the browser, and then you only add it in where you want to, where the grid does or, or, or where you do it. So there's more to that reset file, but that's the most important part in terms of grid layout. And so the other part is that this order is important here. So you want to have your reset CSS first, 
then the grid system, and then your own style sheet. And this is because in the way CSS works, um, whatever comes later overwrites the first. So I want to zero things out with the C reset, but then be able to overwrite it with the grid system, and then I want my own styles to be able to write the grid system if I, if I need to. All right, so hopefully that makes um, the whole box model and grid system a little bit more understandable.